Hi, Farmies. Today I want to talk to you about a medication called Theophylline. Theophylline is a xanthine. Um, and that may sound kind of complicated, but actually you already know another xanthine. Um, one of the xanthines that you guys probably see every day is caffeine. Um, so coffee um, contains a xanthine. Um, so it's not too hard to remember. Um, theophylline is a medication used to treat asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema in the lungs. So here is how you're going to remember that. An ace of clubs. The clubs, the club sign kind of looks like the alveoli in your lungs. Um, so asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema, A-C-E. Um, that's how you can remember the um, conditions that we use theophylline for. Um, there are certain people um, who are going to need an increased dose of theophylline. And here's a, here's a little tip, like my paper cigarette. All right, if you're a smoker, either cigarettes or marijuana cigarettes, um, you will process theophylline faster. So you're going to need a higher dose of the medication um, because you have a, a more rapid clearance of theophylline if you smoke cigarettes. Um, so if you are a smoker and you stop smoking, you're going to have to talk to your physician about reducing your dose um, because you're going to need less um, of the medication if you are not a smoker and you'll need more of the medication if you are a smoker. So if you smoke, you're going to need a little bit more of the medication. Um, and because uh, caffeine is a xanthine, um, you will have to drink decaffeinated beverages if you are on theophylline. So sorry, theophylline users, no coffee for you um, or none of the leaded version of coffee for you. Um, what is one of the benefits of using theophylline over other medications? Well, theophylline, it, it, it looks like it's one of the oldest medications that they've used. They've used it for 50 years to treat asthma um, and severe asthma cases. But um, they're recently um, coming to understand that it has some benefits even outside of the lungs. So it can help people breathe or reduce the work of breathing because it increases contractility of the diaphragm. So remember your emphysema patients who are, you know, that tripod breathing, using all of their accessory muscles to breathe. Um, they work really hard to breathe. So this medication actually helps reduce the work of breathing by increasing the contractility of their diaphragm. Um, and it also seems to have some improvement in left ventricular function. Um, so it um, can help um, your heart pump a little bit better, which also helps improve your oxygenation. A third thing that it does is it seems to increase people's sensitivity to CO2. Um, and so you remember the COPD users have a decreased sensitivity to CO2. So by increasing their sensitivity to CO2, we increase their drive to breathe, their respiratory drive, which is um, a very, very good thing. Um, so let's see, what can we remember about theophylline? It treats um, asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema in the lungs. You have to reduce your caffeine intake because you will increase um, your risk of toxicity if you take two medications that do the same thing. So if caffeine um, is a xanthine and then you take theophylline, you're taking two meds, so you increase your risk of toxicity. What does that toxicity look like? Um, it would involve um, an increased risk of the side effects. So the side effects of xanthines would be GI upset, dysrhythmias, um, and possibly seizures because it has some CNS effects as well. Um, you do need to check patients' um, blood levels while they're taking this med because it is processed in the liver and everyone processes a little bit differently. Um, so you'll, you will have to check levels. And like I said, if you are a smoker, you're going to need more. If you are a non-smoker, you'll require less. Um, and so because it is processed in the liver, you also have a risk of hepatotoxicity. Um, so I think that's everything I need to tell you about theophylline. Have a great weekend.